Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, LevinRose.com. I've used them for several years now. I've been really happy with their products. I use their beard oil, their beard conditioner, and also their beard wash. They've got several different scents and also unscented as well if you're into that. But check them out. I've got a link down in the description. Also, there is a coupon code for 15% off your first order. Uh, you can get, you know, Prime members get free shipping on Amazon as well. So check them out. Uh, again, definitely wanted to thank them for sponsoring today's video. Without further ado, we'll get right into it. Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, wanted to do a video here on uh, what I get asked a lot here at the store and online is you bought your kayak, you did all your research, you pulled the trigger on it. What accessories do I need? So I'm going to go over my top 10 uh, most important kayak accessories starting out. And again, recreational side of it, because again, the fishing side is going to be kind of in a different stratosphere as far as your accessories go. But these are going to be my top 10 most important kayak accessories for recreational floating. I'll just get right into it. So uh, I just doing my top 10 most important. Uh, and again, this is my opinion. So there's plenty of accessories out there. Uh, there's a lot of different routes you can go on this. But uh, starting out, really, um, a tow rope. So that's, this doesn't necessarily mean anything that you have to buy. This could be a cam strap. This can be a nylon rope. You want something that's going to hold up in wet, you know, in, in wet conditions and sunlight. This can be an old anchor rope, but something to tie on your front handle to where if you're going into some shallows, you can drag it through, so to speak. So tow rope is a good thing to, 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 to get on, um, you know, just starting out, just something simple to, to put on your kayak. Um, number nine, going to be a tow flag. So different than a tow rope, a tow flag, you see here, this is Yak Attack's tow flag. Uh, check your state, obviously, with the, uh, with the ordinances and the laws. In Arkansas here, it's anything over three feet past the tailgate. You've got to have a red flag on it. This one here is kind of a vinyl. Uh, it's not the flag that's going to get torn up in the, uh, the wind and the rain and the sun. This here is going to last a long time. This costs 10 bucks, so it's not a super, uh, super expensive item, but it's really important. It can kind of can kind of get you out of a ticket there. Uh, I've never seen people give a whole lot of grief over that, but again, there is a law out there for it. A lot of times if they pull you over for something else, they can get you on that, so just kind of be prepared on that. Um, number eight, probably a paddle holder. Uh, and what I mean by that is Yak Attack sells the, and this is one of their best selling items. This is the Roto Grip paddle holder. These retail at $17 currently. Uh, and it's just that it's track mounted. So if you have gear track, it'll go right in there. Uh, a lot of times you're going to need two of these to effectively hold a paddle. So what brings me to my next item is this is the Yak Attack double header with the Roto Grip paddle holders installed on them. This is 40 bucks. So instead of buying two items for 17 bucks, you can buy one of these bad boys for 40. And what it does is it kind of kicks, it mounts on your gear track right here. And it kind of, here's the edge of your boat. It kind of kicks the paddle out to the side. So, and it also has these bungees attached to it that you can throw over your paddle as well to kind of give you a little bit more security on that. These are really nice. You can also mount, uh, you can mount different Yak Attack accessories like your cup holders, your fishing rod holders to this uh, here by removing this, uh, this little wing nut. But uh, really, really good item here. And again, not a huge cost on that. Uh, number six is gonna be, I'm sorry, number seven is gonna be your gear track. So you wanna mount different accessories to it. You probably have a kayak that already has gear track installed on it but a lot of times you'll find that a lot of different items you want on different places where you don't necessarily have gear track so you can buy these um, and install them yourself or have the paddle shop install them uh, yak attack sells them and both a composite kind of a plastic little lighter maybe medium hit duty and you can get the stainless steel for a little bit more of a heavier duty depending on what kind of item that you're stalling on there these are this is the four inch gear track um, and that composite plastic. These are 10 bucks. Um, this is the stainless steel. 
eight inch, which includes the mounting hardware and everything. So again, if you need something a little bit more robust and maybe a little longer on there, you can do that as well. You can also get the, the, the stainless steel, you can get those in a variety of sizes, just like you can the composite. So there's just kind of two examples of those. Obviously the different sizes will range in price, so keep that in mind. But uh, if you're needing some different mounting options, they, Yank Attack has a ton of different options on that. So number six, again, <laughs> is gonna be your light or flag. Now this is for your visibility. Um, and again, depending on your local ordinance, local laws, you're gonna need this if you're floating, you know, low light situations, uh, deep fog, early morning, late in the evening. You're gonna need what they call a 360 LED light. And that's what the VisiCarbon Pro does. So. This comes out of the box. It uh, it folds up kind of like your, uh, you know, kind of like a, a, a tent pole. Uh, it's got that little bungee in it that keeps it together, but you can fold it up really nicely, keep it in a box. Also, um, your flag here that goes on the end of the pole, this is your pouch. So you can, when you're not using it, you can take the flag off. You can stuff this whole thing in that pouch, stuff it in your front hatch, stuff it in your dry bag. Uh, this also has the the LED light, which is 360 degrees. The only thing you gotta do to turn that on is to screw it tight. And it comes with the AA battery, I believe. Um, yeah, AA battery, which those are included on this. Uh, that gives you that 360 light visibility plus your orange flag. This uses uh, a T-bolt uh, track mount. So keep that in mind if you wanna kind of store it on the back of your kayak or the front. Uh, you may need to get a, a small gear track or a small single mount to kind of put that on there. But these are nice. These are 95 bucks, so a little bit on the pricier side. But again, um, they sell those in different price points too. They sell them that don't fold up like this. It's just the long rod. Uh, I want to say those are like 70 bucks. Those are a big seller with this. And you can also just buy the orange flag. So again, just the pole with the orange flag, those are 35 bucks currently. So th there are some different options, but uh, again, pay attention to your local ordinances, local laws. Some of them require if you're on the water certain times a day that you have that 360 light. And also it's a bit of a safety thing too. Uh, number five, now this is for you guys that, uh, or, or gals, I'm sorry, uh, that have your sit inside kayaks. So this is where you're gonna want a bilge pump or a bilge sponge. Uh, the bilge sponge runs about 16 bucks. The pump is 22, yeah, 22 bucks. These are perception uh, kayak accessories. They can go on any kayak, but you know, there may be some cheaper options out there. But uh, these are for if you, if you have a lot of water, if you take it on a lot of water inside your kayak, you can put the bottom down in the water and you can pump kind of like a bicycle pump and it shoots it out like a squirt gun. Your bilge pump is gonna be more for your heavier volume of water. If you've got a little bit of water, get you a bilge sponge. Um, these are also really good for sit on top kayaks. So if you've ever been in some heavy surf, you get rained on a little bit, sometimes you'll get some water inside those hatches. They're not waterproof. Um, these are really nice to have. You can kind of stick in there, squeeze it out on the side of the kayak and you're good to go. Uh, again, sometimes you will get a little bit of water inside of those sit, in top, sit on top. So these are just nice to have and they're a cheap option. Any sponge will do really, but those bilge sponges really soak up quite a bit of that, uh, quite a bit of that water. Uh, number four, uh, a transport system. So depending on what kind of kayak you got, if you've got a really heavy fishing kayak, you're gonna wanna think about how you're gonna transport that back and forth. You can use, uh, you've, you've probably seen my video on the Wilderness Systems kayak cart. Uh, that's for your heavier duty kayaks. You've got some lighter duty stuff that Suspens does. Uh, a company called Suspens. I'll leave a link down in the description below for them. We sell Suspens. Um, the only thing I would caution you to stay away from is your plug-in carts. So plug-in carts are the carts that you stick up in the scupper holes, uh, probably in the middle or the rear of the kayak. The reason I tend to steer people away from those is the tubes that are molded into the kayak for those scupper holes, they're not designed the same way the hull of your boat is. So they're not designed to handle weight or a lot of stress, and it's typically the thinnest part of your boat. You're putting a lot of stress on there, so here's your kayak hull, you put your plug-in card in there, and when you drag it, it tends to 
do this inside that scupper hole, which puts a lot of stress on it. We see a lot of damage because of that, and you can take on some water and not know that you have damage there. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, especially if you've got a kayak over, you know, really over 60 pounds, I wouldn't suggest doing it. Um, I know Hobie does their own plug-in cart, but really um, at a pro angler at 150 pounds, even with a reinforced scupper hole back there, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, even Hobie will advise you to not do it for more than an hour, just even setting it on there. It's because those scupper holes are not designed for that much stress. Uh, next on the list would be number three, so dry bags. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you got a sit on top or a sit in kayak, nothing on a kayak is waterproof. So if you, you know, dry storage just means it's out of the elements. It's uh, keeping it out of the rain, keeping it out of the sun. If you've got something you just can't get wet at all, you're going to want to invest in some dry bags. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes and a variety of different price points and quality points. Just anything that's you know waterproof and protectant is going to do, especially if you have wet clothes and dry clothes, you want to keep those separated. That's another good option as well for that. So it, you know, NRS sells them, a lot of different companies. You can buy them online. You can buy them at paddle shops. A lot of different options you can go on there. Uh, number two, really, um, probably our biggest seller, bar none, is the Yak Attack track mounted cup holder. So these mount on the gear track with a little T bolt, which you see here in this little hardware pack, and you got a little rubber, a uh, little rubber bumper here, a little washer that goes on there. Uh, you just you set it, you know, you loosen it up with a T bolt on there. You slide it on your gear track where you want it, and then you twist it to where you want that to stay. These are phenomenal if you've got, so they're a bit taller and uh, you, that's kind of my issue with a lot of molded in cup holders on kayaks is they're not tall enough for your, uh, your larger like 30 ounce tumblers. This here's the ticket for that. Also, if you have a koozie with a can, that will fit in there as well. Uh, and then number one, first and foremost, um, is your paddle. Uh, so guys, splurge on your paddle. That's your engine. That's what's pulling you forward. Um, I've got a video on selecting a quality paddle that uh, kind of covers a lot of that. But guys, that's the number one biggest accessory. I know you have to have a paddle for a kayak, but guys, save a decent amount of room. Save about $150 to $200 just for your paddle. I don't care what kind of kayak you're paddling. That's going to make your, your, your time on the water a lot more enjoyable. Notice I didn't include a PFD in accessories because to me that is not really an accessory. That's a necessity. But, uh, you know, that's something I would definitely add is get a quality, a high quality kayak vest PFD. Uh, again, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, comfort levels. It's always best to try those out. My personal favorite are their NRS and Stolquist. Um, I did a review on the Stolquist Keeper, which is my personal kayak vest. But again, Different strokes for different folks. I use mine for fishing. There's a lot of pockets, a lot of tether points on there. Uh, Stolquist and, and NRS also sell a really high quality just paddling vest as well. But anyways, I hope this. Uh, I hope hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, this kind of steered you in a direction um, that you were you were kind of wondering before. And again, you don't have to spend a ton of money on stuff. I always advise people take your kayak out a couple of times before you really start to think about accessories and where you want to go with that. Because once you're out on the water and once you're doing the activity that you're meaning to do with your kayak, then you're going to kind of realize, you know, maybe it would be nice to have this or that or maybe a different mounting point on the front or the back. You'll know once you get on the water kind of where you're wanting to go with that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, if you're one of my regulars, thank you so much for the support and we will see you on the next one.